Exactly. And then, so me and my co-founders, and one of them, um, Douglas Koo, who well, um, has lived in Hong Kong for many years, but... Um, You're here? Douglas! Um, he's in the back. Okay. Are you seriously there? Excellent. <laughs> Say hello, everybody. That's Douglas. Hello, entrepreneur from Malaysia. Who's from Malaysia? There's a couple of Malaysians in there, right? Singaporeans, sorry. Different. Welcome. Yeah, so, yeah, so one of the things is, so back then, to, to, to give you an indication of how little we knew, uh, you know, we were in a meeting with some potential investors. Uh, and in fact, uh, I don't know if anyone met Chris Justice, uh, but... From, uh, from Quam, right? Yeah, Quam. And, and, and back then he was running investments for the South China Morning Post. And the question he asked me and Doug and our third co-founder was, so who's the sports fan? And we looked at each other. Uh, well, is that the kind of question you ask people when they come to you? Who's, who's the well, like you fashion think, fan? Yeah, right. So now I'm, I'm learning a lot. Right? Um, yeah, so anyways, but uh, so, so we set up this business. We didn't know what we are getting into. But, you know, they say that if, if you actually do a factor analysis and really understand all the risks that you're, you're up against, you would probably never start a business in the first place. Um, but, you know, fortunately for us, you know, when we were early, you know, we kind of utilized, you know, some of the PR to our advantage. And to, to give you an example, we, we always thought it was important to be first. Um, so although there was a, a wide range of other sports, you know, companies out there focused on the internet, <coughs> You know, Doug and I went to a press conference and we said, guys, we're first. And, and they says, believed you. Because it said in the press release. Yeah, so what happens is, like, if you say something enough, that uh, actually So what was the name it. of that company? It, it's called Sha Wei. Is it still around? It is. It's under the uh, Tom.com umbrella. Of, of what does Sha Wei mean? So Shark's sh tail? It, it means brave shark in Chinese. And, you know, there's a story behind that, too. Um, so we were sitting there thinking, well, so there was a company called Chinasports.com, and there was another company called SportsChina.com, and there was a third one called CN. There weren't any dot .cns at that stage, right? Yeah, so it was all .com. Well, actually there were. There was like SportsCN.com and CNSports.com, and it was, it was a bunch of these, and we're like, well, you know, that doesn't make any sense to us. So, so we were the first company that said, you know, let's just come up with a name out of the blue. You know, similar, you know, Amazon is a name that has nothing to do with books, kind of when they started, but it was a name that people would recognize. I find it entertaining yeah. that you've got two foreigners, I know, he's Malaysian, come up with a Chinese name for an internet website, whereas the rest are all like English names, right? Uh, yeah, that's right, you know, and... Um, a bit like Chunar. Yeah, Chunar, in a way We'll get to that well. in a moment. So, yeah. so Xiaowei was a sports content company, were you writing content, were you aggregating content, were you... What were you doing? Well, so back then, there, there wasn't anything to aggregate because not many uh, companies were online. And, um, and, 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 and all those English sites were kind of copying from each other. Um, some really, really crappy content. So what we did instead was we, we just hired our own journalism team and went out and actually wrote stories. And then we also partnered with uh, the Reuters News Agency to actually translate um, sports news and information into Chinese. They didn't have any in Chinese at the time. They had a little bit, but, um, you know, we felt very strongly about paying for it, which is a surprise. You know, some people, like, really believe in that, like, you should pay for stuff in China. Um, Did you have a business model talking about paying for stuff? Were you just, no, let's just create a website, or were you, what was your business model? Was it offline events? Did you, do you sell advertising? It was um, advertising. It, it was, it, it Did it was, work? And it, and it worked. I mean, we certainly, um, you know, generated our fair share of advertising. You know, so back then it wasn't enough to you know, keep the business, uh, to allow it to be independent. We, we kind of needed the capital markets magic that you know, the guys at you know, Hutchison and you know, Chung Kong had to do better. Yeah, they had silly money in those days. So. so let's move into the travel the travel space. So you sell off Xiaowei and you go, right, uh, chill my thumbs, what shall I do? So tell us a little bit that what what happened. How did you get into the travel business? Yeah, so uh, so Douglas again and myself and our third co-founder, who's a Chinese guy, were saying, well, you know, we kind of like did our own thing for a while, and then one day, you know, we got together. It was actually the Starbucks at the um, Airport Express. And but I thought when you sell a business, you can afford like a five-star hotel to meet rather than the Starbucks, <laughs> or is this a Starbucks still vital in the entrepreneurial? Well, you know. Um, 
you know, you can do that, I guess, but, you know, I guess, I guess if you're a man of the people, maybe you get better ideas. <laughs> you're a man of the people. So, um, so, 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 so we were brainstorming at that Starbucks about different business ideas, and, you, you know, kind of collectively we thought, well, you know, in 2004, the hottest company in the world was Google. I don't even know if they had gone public yet, or, or, or maybe they had just gone public. And so this is a hot company, growing, and so so we just asked, you know, the basic question: Well, you know, where does Google make its money from? So well, and then of course we realized automotive was one category they made money from. Financial services was another one. You know, travel was one as well. In fact, you know, travel was one of the biggest. And so we thought, well, okay, could we target that revenue stream? Could we create a better business? Thought, and, and we didn't like automotive because it seemed too concentrated at the time. Although looking back, that was probably not quite the case. It is actually extremely fragmented. I mean, when you think about used car sales, uh, they have used uh, car sales in China. I thought everybody wants to buy like spanking new Mercedes. And well, like you got to think ahead, right? You got to think, you know, not what people want today, but uh, kind of what they want in five years. Uh, and we uh, didn't like medical, which was which was another big category because we didn't want to be in the business of flogging, you know, you know medicine to people. Body parts. Uh, yeah, body parts and Viagra and stuff like that, um, or, or like fake Viagra. So we thought uh, so travel. So travel just seemed like you milk know, powder. There's a big business in milk powder, right? Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, and you know, um, yeah, it's a big business um, globally. Yeah. You know, like they run out of like milk powder in France because of what's happening here. Um, so we picked travel, and after that we started thinking, okay, since since our whole thesis was how do we take a piece of Google's travel revenues, we started thinking, okay, so, so what sort? And Google's an advertising model. Was Google in China at the time? Was Google just uh, getting just in? getting into you know like just getting in, so making their. Uh, 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 level one mistakes. So nobody was really established at the time. Baidu was still early days, right? It was still. Yeah, it was. Uh, so we had the benefit of timing, and what I mean by that is, uh, when we started uh, our, our our business, um, a, a, a lot of companies in the travel industry didn't quite understand what performance marketing meant, search engine optimization. So you went to the market with. Performance marketing was your from day one because like we knew that's where the market was. I talked about you know we have to think about where the market's going and so so we thought well there's no way we're going to compete with all these other guys and these, these other silly models which which never made any sense to us in the first place and so so we had a very uh, performance model. Yeah, but in China, I, I was involved with ad agencies at the time in China. Buying advertising was all based on relationships, right? You would go and you'd somebody you'd give somebody a Rolex watch and they would. Uh, they'd buy a month of advertising on Cena.com or whatever. It was all relationship building. So wasn't it a bit weird for you to go into the market and say, it's all about performance? It's like this, I believe... Somebody just collapsed. You all right? Everybody okay? Wait, wait, hold it, hold it, hold it. Stop, 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 stop.